In this example, we will look at using a truth table to help us design a switching circuit to satisfy certain conditions. So in the example we're going to look at, in a room there are three independent switches to operate a light, where turning a switch on or off will change the current state of the light from on to off or vice versa. And when all the switches are off, the light is off. So we want to find a Boolean expression for a suitable switching circuit. And to solve this problem, let's call our three switches P, Q and R. And each of these switches individually can be in two states, on or off, which means that altogether there will be 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 possible combinations of the switches. And we need to consider what state the light will be in for each of those combinations of states of the switches. Hence, we set up a truth table as shown here. And we want to set up all possible combinations of the switches. So given there's eight rows of this table to represent the eight combinations, I'll let the first four rows with P be zero, representing when that switch is off, and the second four be one for when that switch is on. I'll then similarly go zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one for when Q is off and on and for R0101, 0101. And by using that pattern, I now have every possible combination of those three switches. And the next column F will represent the state of the light for each of these combinations of switches being on and off. Now the first important rule we were told is that when all switches are off, the light is off. So that means in that first row when P, Q and R are all zero, the state of the light F is also zero for off. We were then also told turning any given switch on or off changes the state of the light. So that means, for instance, in the second row, if we turn just one switch, R, on, the light will now be on, giving F equals 1. Similarly, in the third row of the table, there just one switch is on, Q is on, and the other two are off. So that will also turn the light on. Whereas in the next row, 0, 1, 1. Now we know that the light was on when switch Q was on and the other two switches were off. But in this fourth row here, switch Q is on, but now switch R has also been changed to be on, which means the light must go from on back to off again, so that when those two switches are on, the state of the light F will be off, zero. And similarly, Whenever there are two switches on, in fact, the light will be off. So looking at these two rows here, they represent that case. While whenever one switch is on, the light will be on, such as in this row of the table. So finally, what about the last row where switches P, Q and R are all on? Well, in that case, that is effectively like having two switches on, which remember means the light is off, and then turning another switch on. So that means in fact that the light will go back on. It was off with two switches, so if we turn on the third switch it will come back on. So what this means is that as a summary, whenever there are an even number of switches on, the light is off. Whenever there are an odd number of switches on, the light is on. And finally, we can write the state of the circuit or of the switches in the circuit in this final column. So the first one here, P is off, so P bar. Q is off, so we'll call that Q bar. R is off, so P bar and Q bar and R bar. While in the next line, this is P is off, Q is off, but R is on, so P bar, Q bar, R. And again, we can do a shortcut. 
look at column P. For the first four, in fact, it's always P bar. P is off. While for the next four, with the way we set that up, P was on. So that's P when that switch is on. Looking at Q, similarly, for the first two, that was zero, so Q bar. The next two ones for Q being on, so Q. And you'll notice similarly we can alternate these Q bars and Qs according to how we've set up the table. While finally for the last one in the third row, switch R was off, so R bar. In the fourth row, switch R was on, so R. And we can continue in a similar way so that each of these rows of the table shows the state of the circuit, finishing with the last row when P, Q and R were all on, thus giving state P, Q, R, for instance. So the final thing we can now do is thus write down an expression for this circuit. And to do that we can look at all the rows where we had a 1 for the light being on for F, which was this one this one, that one, and also this one, and combine those expressions so that F is equal to P bar Q bar R for the first one, or, so that's a plus, P bar Q R bar was the next one, plus this one here is P Q bar R bar, and the last one where this light is on was plus PQR. So this represents the expression for the circuit. And we could have also quickly seen this, that this is correct, because in each of those first three terms, one switch is on. And in the final term, PQR, all three switches are on, satisfying the condition of our circuit that an odd number of switches needed to be on to turn the light on. So that's an example of how we can use a truth table or general reasoning to write down expression for a switching circuit given certain conditions. And in fact you could verify that in this case this is actually as simplified as this expression would get. We could take out a common factor such as P bar out of the first two terms and P out of the second two for instance, but beyond that we really could not do much to simplify this further.